Bobby Jindal. I don't know if you saw this story. This was um, over in the Huffington Post, but it was actually it was an, it's an Associated Press story. They picked it up from the AP. Everyone knows how Ronald Reagan tripled our national debt, raised taxes on people making less than fifty thousand dollars a year eleven times, lowered taxes on people making over a million dollars a year. I don't remember how many times, but a lot of times. And, uh, you know, started the process of creating a large national debt. And at first, when Reagan was doing this, I mean, Reagan's first idea was, uh, you know, based on Art Laffer, who we were laughing about yesterday, uh, he was giving a speech here in Washington, D.C. It's like, why does anybody listen to these idiots? But in any case... Laffer came up with this theory that if you cut taxes, you'd increase government revenue. Sounded good. Sure, you know, cut taxes and, and, you know, people will like Mitt Romney. They're not going to put that money in a Swiss bank account. They're not going to put it in a $100 million trust for their kids. Uh, Oh, wait a minute. They already have? He already has? Mitt Romney already put $100 million in a trust for his kids? Oh, okay. And we have no idea how much he has in Swiss banks? It's, yeah, okay, it's... In any case, what Art Laffer was saying and what Ronald Reagan was saying was that, you know, billionaires like Mitt Romney are not going to just increase their savings or buy another house or build a car elevator. He built a car elevator? Oh, that's right. Um, That they're not going to do that, that what they're going to do is they're going to build a factory and put people to work. Because after all, that's what job creators do, right? Instead, people like Mitt Romney have been dismantling factories, shipping them overseas, making more profit, and putting that profit in Swiss banks, which, by the way, are now charging anywhere from a half a percent to one percent to hold your money. Negative interest rates. So anyhow, Reagan came up with this idea. It wasn't Reagan. It was the people around him. Reagan was just an actor. But the, the people around Reagan came up with this idea that if we cut taxes on rich people, it would raise government revenue. It didn't work. It 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 it, it, it dropped government revenue or it hurt government revenue. Um, Reagan was also jacking up government spending at the time with his Star Wars uh, initiative, uh, three trillion dollars to, which has still never never done a thing that worked. So about halfway through his presidency, as it became obvious it wasn't working. And he had pretty much raised taxes on working people as much as he could before people would start screaming or figure out that what he was doing. The Republicans came up with a whole new story about why it was a good thing to do deficit spending. And this whole new story that the Republicans came up with was captured in the phrase that David Stockman shared with us and has become now part of the lexicon which is starve the beast, the beast being government. So the rationale, they they said, okay, we cut taxes on rich people, and we went from, when Reagan came into office, the national debt was about $800 billion, as I recall. It was less than a trillion. And Reagan took it up almost to $3 trillion in eight years. No president outside of time of uh, World War II, basically, or the Civil War, no president had ever run up that much debt ever in the history of the United States. Reagan ran up more debt in his eight years than every president from Jimmy Carter all the way back to George Washington combined if you pull out the years that we were involved in the two world wars. And we paid back those debts, by the way. So uh, Reagan and his buddies were stuck. I mean, they were in this situation where, you know, hey, we got this trickle-down theory, and people are starting to say... You know, these guys are peeing on us and telling us, ra- telling us it's raining. I mean, people are starting to, to figure out what a scam this is. We've got to figure out another way to sell this to Republicans. Now, we know, we Republicans, we know that most of our voters are, are white working class people. And many of them in the South, thanks to Nixon's very successful Southern strategy, pulling all those Democrats out of the, the racist white Democrats out of the, the Democratic Party, George Wallace's Democratic Party, what became Lyndon Johnson's Democratic Party, Lyndon Johnson of the Voting Rights Act, the Civil Rights Act, and turning them into Republicans. 
So, you know, the, 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 the Reagan guys, the, the Republicans, they looked around and they said, okay, we've got a bunch of white racists here. And as Lee Atwater pointed out back in 1980, he said, you know, back in the 60s, we used to say N-word, N-word, N-word. But you can't do that anymore to get those white voters to come along. And so we got a little more sophisticated. We started talking about forced busing. And everybody knew that we were talking about people of color. And he says, but then we got a little more sophisticated and figured out, you don't even have to talk about that. You don't even have to talk about forced busing. You can simply say tax policy. And people figure out that you're talk- trying to screw black people. I mean, we've got the, you got the, here's Lee Outwater saying this in his own words. Here he is. You start out in 1954 by saying, by 1968, you can't say that, that hurts your backfire. So you say stuff like uh, force busing, states rights and all that stuff. And you're getting so abstract now, you're talking about cutting taxes and all of these things you're talking about are totally economic things. And the byproduct of them is blacks get hurt worse than whites. And subconsciously, maybe that is part of it. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that if it is getting that abstract and that coded, uh, that, that, we're, that we're doing away with the racial problem one way or the other. Uh, you follow me? Because obviously sitting around saying, uh, we want to cut taxes, we want to cut this, and we want is much more abstract than, than even the busing thing. Uh, and a hell of a lot more abstract than, than you know. Than use, it's a hell of a lot more abstract than using the N-word. So, what the Reagan guys came out with was the reason. there's actually a reason why we're trying to increase the national debt. We're trying to increase the national debt to create a debt crisis so that when the Democrats come along, when they get into power, as they inevitably will, and Bill Clinton ultimately did, when the Democrats get, get to power, there'll be such a huge national debt that they won't be able to spend any more money. They won't be able to give any more money to black people. This was the the code. Now, of course, most of the people in poverty in the United States are white, but it doesn't matter. Republicans play on white racist fears with this. So Sam Brownback tried this in Kansas, and Bobby Jindal just tried this in Louisiana. And I got to tell you about what Bobby Jindal did. I'll do that in five minutes when we come back from the break. It's astonishing. And how how much damage it's doing to Louisiana. This is the Tom Hartman Program. It's like Reagan kneecapped America. And now you've got a bunch of Republican governors kneecapping their states. Why isn't anybody calling them out? 